breaking the wall of the beginning of time. How cosmology will tell us what happened before the Big Bang. Jean-Luc Lenners, Max Planck Society, Potsdam. When the wall fell, I was only 11 years old. I must admit that I did not fully appreciate the significance of the event at that age. Good morning. Uh, it's a great honor to be here and to be able to give this talk. In my talk, I'm going to take an even longer view uh, by considering the evolution, not just of species, but the evolution of the universe as a whole. And um, I will tell you about the Big Bang and what might have come before. Uh, to start, it is useful to remember to just briefly recall the biggest discovery in cosmology of last century, which was the expansion of the universe. So as early as 1917, Einstein discovered that his equations only allow for universes that either expand or contract. But he was so shocked himself by this that he, he didn't believe it and he tried to modify his equations. Later on, he regretted this. Um, meanwhile, Georges Lemaitre, who was a priest and a cosmologist at the same time, studied these solutions uh, of expanding universes and developed the idea of a Big Bang, what he called uh, a primeval atom as the, uh, the starting point of the expansion of the universe. And the expansion was, of course, confirmed by Edwin Hubble uh, by astronomical observations in 1929. So if the universe is, is expanding, then if we go back in time, then it was smaller, and in fact also hotter and denser. And this leads to the idea that, well, there was a beginning to this whole expansion. Um, there was some evidence um, uh, that was found in 1965 for for why the universe really was hot and dense at early times. And this is the best evidence we have that the Big Bang took place. So I'll briefly describe it to you. Um, shortly after the Big Bang, the universe was very hot, very dense, and all, even, um, all particles were very energetic and constantly bounced off each other. There were no atoms at the time, only really elementary particles. And even particles of light couldn't travel freely for very long. They just bounced off something else all the time. So the universe was opaque, like a soup. And then 300,000 um, years after the Big Bang, for the first time, it was cold enough in the universe that the first atoms formed. Now, light interacts less with atoms. And so suddenly, in one moment, the universe became transparent. And all the light that was emitted then um, is still flying through the cosmos and can be measured. And this is called the cosmic background radiation. And it gives us an image of how the universe was shortly after the Big Bang. So it's like a baby image of the universe. And that's what this picture is showing. Um, the picture shows that the universe was at almost the same temperature everywhere, but there were tiny fluctuations in temperature. And these are shown by the different colors in the picture. The, the radiation is now at a wavelength which our eyes cannot see. That's why one has to use artificial colors. Um, and this, this picture, this baby picture of the universe, was the blueprint for how galaxies were distributed later on. Now, after that, most people started believing in a theory of the Big Bang. And the idea that the Big Bang was the beginning of the universe and also the begin beginning of time became widespread. However, as I'm going to tell you now, um, this is very likely to be the wrong uh, idea. And, um, I will illustrate to you why. So I will ask you to please look underneath your seats. Some of you are equipped with a musical instrument, a cymbal. Please take it out. And there should be a little stick as well. I think there's about maybe 10 people in the audience who should have one. OK, if you have one, please hold it up just for a second. OK, great. So um, could one of you please could you please just strike it once? Just once. Great. So that's the idea of the Big Bang. At one point, it goes bang. <laughs> and from there, the whole universe expands. Now, this is not really how it happened. Um, in fact, if we go back in time, we, know, we don't know exactly how big the universe is, but we know at least how big it is, because we can see quite far into the universe. If we take that region and move it back in time, evolve it back in time according to Einstein's equations, one finds that actually when you get to the time of the Big Bang, you don't get to a point, but you get to a whole surface, to lots of regions. So the Big Bang didn't happen at a point, but at lots of different places. Okay, so let's try that. So all of you who have the symbols, 
I will count three, two, one, now. When I say now, could you please all try to strike it at the same time? Ready? Three, two, one, now. Okay, so that's what it was like. <laughs> now, if you think about it, trying to think that this was the beginning of time makes no sense at all. Because we know from this baby picture of the universe that, the, that these big bangs were all almost identical in all these different places. So you have to imagine that you have all these big bangs going off at the same time, in the same way, without there being time before. So how do you synchronize that? How do you... There, the only way we could do it here is because we could communicate before. We could, you know, we could organize this whole thing, that it went off at the same time. Um, and so it is much more reasonable to think that there was some evolution prior to the Big Bang, which resulted in, in triggering the Big Bang in all these regions at the same time. So of course you're going to ask next, well, so what came before? And there are currently two different theories, only two, that really make sense. Um, surprisingly, they're very different. One is called the theory of cosmic inflation. The idea is that there was a very small region of space which um, got blown up hugely in a very short interval of time. So this small region of space then got stretched out, and by being stretched out enormously, it made the universe very smooth and regular over very large regions. And so this could then trigger the Big Bang in, over large regions simultaneously. A second idea is very different, namely that the universe goes through cycles of evolution, that the universe expands and contracts um, alternatively. And then the phase of contraction can also manage to synchronize the universe, and the reversal from contraction to expansion corresponds to the Big Bang in that case. How can we know which one of these is true, if, if any? Um, well, it turns out that both these theories pre predict or explain this baby picture of the universe um, only in the, in the rough detail. So they give roughly the same baby picture of the universe but they predict very different patterns for the small details in this picture. And so up, up to the current, I mean, according to current measurements, both theories are equally, fit the data equally well, but there is currently a European satellite called Planck, which is in orbit and which is taking data and which is making a more precise picture. And next year the results should be out and they may very well be precise enough that we can tell which one of the two makes more sense. Of course, you can ask, is this all? We've already gone beyond the Big Bang, so why not go further? I mean, is this all there is, or is there more? If we want to answer that, we should see what our best theory says. Our best theory currently is string theory. String theory, I should say, has not been tested yet, so everything that I'm saying is um, still completely speculative. But I'm going to tell you just what the situation is according to the way the theory is currently known. Um, so, according to string theory, both these types of universes can ex um, are possible, these inflationary universes and these cyclic universes. In fact, many other universes are possible, some of which are very different from ours, some of which are just a little bit different from ours, but according to the theory, they're all possible solutions of the theory. Moreover, if the theory is right, these are not just theoretical possibilities, but all these universes are real. Because there is a mechanism in the theory in which inside one universe, a new universe can form. This only happens very rarely. It requires a very large quantum jump of a whole region of space. And so it's very rare. Um, but there is plenty of time in the universe. So it will happen, necessarily. In fact, over infinite amounts of time, it will happen an infinite number of times. What's important is that this new universe can be different from the parent universe. And so, with this process, all different universes come into existence, inside each other. And so, what, what string theory leads to is the following picture, that we don't have a universe, but we have a multiverse. These are all different universes which come into existence inside each other. Some have cycles, some have inflation in them, some are green, some are, you know, some can have life in them, some probably cannot. And the question becomes, well, first of all, is this true? And 
Do we, can we test this? Um, the most obvious way would be, in fact, if we could see the, the remnants of a collision of two universes. So it happens in this picture, for example, up on the left, I've shown it with this small yellow triangle, if two of these universes form close together, they can actually collide, because they're both expanding, they can collide with each other. So there is a possibility um, that in the past history of our universe, our universe collided with another universe. And this would leave an imprint on this baby picture of the universe. People so, have analyzed the data so far and, not, and haven't found anything yet. That doesn't mean it won't be there once we have better data. Th the problem is, it's very, on a theoretical level, it's very hard to calculate what this probability should be. And so it's difficult to know at the moment whether this is something that we should expect to see or not expect to see. Um, so currently, we're stuck with the situation that we have to analyze this multiverse on a theoretical level. We have to try and see how do you describe something like this mathematically, and how do you make predictions? How can you find out where we should be, which universe we should be in? And how do, you, how do we know, once we know that, what, um, you know, what, future, what predictions we get for future observations? So, that's the situation we're faced with. Nobody has any good answers to this at the moment. There are about as many answers to these questions as there are cosmologists working on these problems. Um, but we're talking about, you know, the falling of walls here, so I I'm, I'm just want to give you an impression of what people are currently thinking about in cosmology. Um, I'm almost done, but I will just conclude with one remark, which is that these, they're called bubble universes, because they arise as, as a bubble and then expand, these bubble universes, there's more and more of them as you go into the future. So if you go back in time, there were fewer and fewer of these. And if you go back far enough, there necessarily was a point when there was just a single universe. And you can ask, well, but where did that universe come from? And that nobody has any idea about. <laughs> so thank you for your attention.